so this dislocation density this is a very important term uh, in crystal deformation and dislocation density is nothing but it is the measure of how many dissociation uh, dis dislocations present in a quantity of material okay for example i am taking a particular amount of material particular amount of material okay and what is the total amount of dislocation so so far we only discussed about one dislocation the propagation or motion of single dislocation it may be either um, screw dislocation or edge dislocation or mixer dislocation a single dislocation but when i deform this material when i deform this material there are thousands of such a dislocation will be developed across the cross section of the or across the micro section of this material okay there are thousands of dislocations and the combined effect of this thousands of dislocation result into the deformation of this material a visible deformation of this material okay thousands of such a dislocation so this dislocation density actually gives the measure of how many dislocations present in a particular quantity of material okay so we have uh, dislocation lines there are different dislocations dislocation lines are there okay and the total length of this dislocation line total length for a particular dislocation line we have uh, we can measure the dislocation length okay and total length of the all the dislocation line present in a quantity mm cube that means one unit volume of material is called dislocation density okay so the total dislocation length per unit volume of material is called dislocation length or dislocation density is not the length of single dislocation line it is the total length of all the dislocation present in a unit volume of material okay that is the dislocation density and <clears throat> we can also define dislocation density in another term that is a number of dislocation line intersecting a unit area that is another definition that means for example here i am taking a unit volume material okay and here i am taking this this area this is a unit area mm square and some dislocations are intersecting in this area intersecting in this area so we can see there are four lines intersecting in this area four lines intersecting in this um, shaded area so that is also another uh, definition for dislocation density that is the number of dislocation line intersecting in this unit area the shaded area area is the unit area 1 meter uh, mm square so number of dislocation line intersecting in this unit area is the dislocation density or we can say the total length of dislocation lines we have different dislocations in this material unit uh, mm cube material and total length of the dislocation lines per this volume of the material is called dislocation density okay and <clears throat> one second and this uh, temperature change below rct will not affect the dislocation density okay that means um, rct is the recrystallization temperature when we heat the material above recrystallization temperature that is a temperature range um, for any uh, any material there will be recrystallization temperature if we heat the material the grains will restructure in shape and size will be changed when we heat above recrystallization temperature below that of the recrystallization temperature dislocation density will not change and annealing is the important heat treatment process which uh, uh, increases the dislocation density okay by annealing this is the dislocation density and this is a unit the length the unit of length is mm and volume mm cube so mm by mm cube we can say mm minus 2 mm raised to minus 2 that is a unit of dislocation density and 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 6 mm raised to minus 2 is the dislocation density of an annealed material 
and healing is the uh, we heat uh, into above reclusteration temperature and then we slowly cool the material that heat treatment process is called annealing heat treatment process we will study about that in later so in this annealing process this is the dislocation density 10 raised to 4 to 10 raised to 6 mm raised to minus 2 and cold working and strain honey increase the dislocation density by 10 raised to 12 to 10 raised to 16 mm raised to minus 2 Okay, so dislocation we can see that change here. Uh, normally it will be around 10 raised to 4, um, but by cold working and straight handling it is increased to 10 raised to 16. So multiple at uh, increase here, right? 10 raised to 16 very increase here. Cold working and strain hardening. So next I am going to explain what is strain hardening or cold working. So we already uh, studied this. Uh, uh, stress strain diagram stress strain diagram so in this stress strain diagram this is strain this is stress okay and I am loading a particular material a standard specimen we reach this point this is the yield strength of the material after yield strength what happened plastic deformation will take place so this is the plastic deformation okay so I am loading this material I am loading this material, I am applying a force on this material and it is deformed up to elastic point or yield point, up to yield point is deformed, when I release the load, it is come back to its initial shape and size, then again I apply the force on this material, again I apply the increase the force on this material, I apply the force up to this point, up to this point, this is not the ultimate stress point. That means rupture not not rupture start is not Just to do some, some amount of plastic deformation I will apply it. So this is a plastically deformed, a plastically deformed material. Okay, so from the yield point, so this is the yield stress, sigma y. Sigma y is the yield stress. And again I increase the stress up to a point. So this is the, uh, this is not the ultimate stress point, but I, in, uh, this is the amount of plastic deformation. Okay, this is the amount of plastic deformation. Stress corresponding to plastic deformation. So when it reaches this point, very particular amount of and the do plastic deformation would do immaterial immaterial plastic uh, plastic deformation would I it has soap you. Okay, soap you that in the I release the lot. I release the lot. When I release the load, it come back to the load is come back to zero value. Load is come back to zero value. When I release the load, the load will come back to zero value. Okay. And but there will be some strain in that body. There will be some strain in that body, delta epsilon. And that strain is the strain stored inside the body or strain retained inside, inside the body. For example, here in this block, here in this block, I am applying a lot above yield point, above yield point, so it is a length increase here. A length increase here may load video on load release the point that I put a plastic deformation die. And then some strain I will retain you. Some strain is retained inside the structure. And how much amount it is restrained? This much, delta epsilon. So delta epsilon is the amount of strain retained in, in, in the material. Okay. And this process is called strain hardening. This process is called strain hardening. So in the strain hardening process, what we do? We deform the material um, with a stress which is higher than that of yield stress of the material. Okay. Yield stress is always... Um, yield stress of the material then we release the load then some strain or some deformation will retain in that material that is equal to delta epsilon okay so i'm going to deform j the material and either deform j the panel length the course plastic deformation number which length increases under other parish state like you will have and then we apply the stress above sigma y okay so it from amount of plastic deformation and either Throw amount of stress above plastic deformation and yield strength in the middle. So corresponding strain is thrown down. So 
ഇനിഷ്യലി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന ബോഡിനേക്കാൾ ലെങ്ത് കൂടിയ ബോഡിയാണ് ഇത് ലെങ്ത് കൂടുതലുള്ള ഒരു ബോഡിയാണ് ഇത്ര മനസ്സിലായല്ലോ സോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഐ എം അഗൈൻ ഐ എം ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ദി സ്പെസിമെൻ അഗൈൻ ഐ എം ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ദി സ്പെസിമെൻ ഹിയർ ഇൻ ദിസ് ഐ എം അഗൈൻ ഡ്രോയിങ് ദ സ്ട്രെസ് ട്രെയിൻ ഡയഗ്രാം ബട്ട് ഹിയർ ഐ എം യൂസിംഗ് ദ സ്പെസിമെൻ ദ ഡീഫോംഡ് സ്പെസിമെൻ ഈസ് യൂസ് ഫോർ ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഇത് ലെങ്ത് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്ത സ്പെസിമിൻ അല്ലേ അതായത് സം എമൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഈസ് റീടൈൻ ഇൻസൈഡ് ദ മെറ്റീരിയൽ and that material is used for testing okay so when i use that material the deformed material for testing this will be the stress strain diagram this will be the stress strain diagram it will follow the the slope will be same the previous case and here the slope will be same but the yield stress will be shifted from this point to upper point here initially we can see this is the yield point but yield point for the deformed material is higher than that of the undeformed material okay so this is the yield point of the when we test a deformed material this is the graph for testing of a deformed material and this is the again the plastic deformation okay so undeformed material the sigma by value is this one okay this one but deform when i test the deformed material this is the sigma by value or we can say sigma by value of the deformed shape shape is higher than that of sigma y of the undeformed shape undeformed material okay so this is called strain hardening or warp hardening strain hardening or warp hardening that means by applying a stress which is greater than that of the yield stress of the material the strength of the material is improved the strength of the material is improved what is the reason here by deformation its sigma y value is higher than that of this sigma y value that means we need to apply more amount of stress on this deformed material to deform further okay when i deform when i need to deform this deformed material further i need to supply more amount of sigma y than that of the original material that means the strength of this deformed material is higher than that of the undeformed material so this method of strengthening of material is called strain hardening or warp hardening അതായത് ഈ നമ്മൾ എവിടെയാണോ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്ത് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ഡിഫോർമേഷൻ സ്റ്റോപ്പ് ചെയ്ത് അതേ പോയിന്റിൽ തന്നെ ആയിരിക്കും സിഗ്മ വൈ ഓൾറെഡി ഈ മെറ്റീരിയൽ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഉണ്ടാവും ഈ മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഓൾറെഡി എന്താണ് നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഗേജ് ലെങ്ത് എടുക്കും ആ ഗേജ് ലെങ്തില് ഒറിജിനൽ ലെങ്തും ചേഞ്ച് ലെങ്ത് അവിടെ സംഭവിച്ചല്ലോ അതായത് ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ന്യൂ സ്പെസിമെൻ ന്യൂ ഡീഫോംഡ് സ്പെസിമൻ ഓക്കെ ആ ന്യൂ ഡീഫോംഡ് സ്പെസിമെന്റില് നമ്മൾ ലോഡ് അപ്ലൈ ഈ ഗ്രാഫ് എങ്ങനെയാ ലോഡ് അതിന് കറസ്പോണ്ട് ചെയ്യാനുള്ള സ്ട്രെയിനാ ഓൾറെഡി അതിൽ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഉണ്ടോ ഇല്ലയോ എന്നുള്ള ഇറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് എ മാറ്റർ ഞാൻ ഒരു വൺ ലോഡ് ഇൻക്രീമോ വാട്ട് ഈസ് എ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് മെഷേഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ഗ്രാഫ് ഓൾറെഡി അതിൽ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഉണ്ടോ എന്നുള്ള ഇറ്റ്സ് നോട്ട് എ മാറ്റർ ഓക്കെ ഞാൻ ഇവിടുത്തെ ഈ സ്ട്രെസ് സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഗ്രാഫില് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ചേഞ്ച് ലെങ്ത് ബൈ ഒറിജിനൽ ലെങ്ത് നമ്മൾ ഒരു ഗേജ് ലെങ്ത് എടുക്കും ഒരു ഗേജ് ലെങ്ത് മെഷർ ചെയ്യും ആ ഗേജ് ലെങ്തിന്റെ ഇടയ്ക്ക് വാട്ട് ഈസ് ദ ചേഞ്ച് ലെങ്ത് വെൻ ഐ ഇൻക്രീസ് ദ സ്ട്രെസ് അതാണ് ഈ സ്ട്രെയിൻ അതിൽ ഓൾറെഡി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്ന സ്ട്രെയിൻ നമ്മൾ കൗണ്ട് ചെയ്യില്ല സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് കോൾ സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഹാർണിങ് വാട്ട് ഈസ് അഡ്വാൻറ്റേജ് ഓഫ് സ്ട്രെയിൻ ഹാർണിങ് സോ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഞാൻ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ്സിൽ പറഞ്ഞിരുന്നു ഐ ആം മേക്കിംഗ് എ കണക്ടിംഗ് റോട്ട് ഐ ആം മേക്കിംഗ് എ കണക്ടിംഗ് റോട്ട് ബൈ കാസ്റ്റിംഗ് പ്രോസസ് 
and by forging process. Okay, forging process. In casting process, what we do? We, we make a malt and we pour the molten material into that malt cavity and after solidification, we got a shape of this casting rod. And in case of forging, what we do? We, may, we use a mold with a particular cavity and we use a rectangular uh, raw material we, uh, and then we apply pressing force. We press the rectangular material into the um, connecting rod shape. Okay. So here we can see which one has higher strength, cast product or forged product? Forging product. Forged product. This is because of the strain hardening. This is because of the strain hardening. Because when we use pressing force, the material is strained already. This is a deformed material. And this one for casting, this is the undeformed material. And we already compare the strength of this deformed material and undeformed material sigma y value. For deformed material has higher sigma y value than that of undeformed material. So we need to supply more amount of force to deform a deformed material. So when we manufacturing a particular component by applying deformation instead of machining or casting process by applying deformation or by applying um, um, straining if we can make a particular product that will have some strain hardening or work hardening the strength will improve okay any doubt no sir then then come to this dislocation here I am applying plaster deformation. For this connecting rod, I am applying plaster deformation. What happened to the dislocation? Dislocation density increase or decrease here? During plaster deformation, dislocation density, number of dislocations per unit volume increase or decrease here? Hmm? Plaster deformation applying both. Increase. The number of bonds between the atoms broken, then they shift from or they move by glide or climb or um, cross slip by motion. Move dislocations. So number of dislocation will be developed when I deform this material. Okay, when I deform this material. Or we can say the dislocation density will increase. The dislocation density will increase. Okay. So, by plastic deformation, dislocation density increased. Dislocation density increased. Okay. And, of course, the dislocation is always weak in the crystal. A perfect crystal arrangement or a perfect arrangement of atoms in a crystal is the strongest one. When there is any dislocation, that is that always weaken the material. So increasing the dislocation, increasing the dislocation, weaken the material. Weaken the material. Okay, so here there is a in the problem on the tender. Okay. Here in this by straining process, in this straining process, strain hardening process, dislocation density will increase. When the dislocation density increases, the material become weakened. Weak material out. Strength reduce. It. But here in this graph, we can see by strain handling strength is increasing. Contradictory at all statements are there. Right? Right? Yes, dislocation density increase here. When I deform any material, dislocation density will increase. Dislocation density actually the disorders. When the disorder increases, that actually weaken the material. That actually weaken the material. So, that means when I deform 
that leads to the weakening of the material but here experimentally it is it is shown that by deformation the strength is increases contradictory alla rendu condition this is the theoretical one this is the theoretical condition when a deforming material by strain hardening the material will weaken but by experiment we this is the condition and this is the result that is by um, deformation or strain hardening strength is increased okay sir the rupture point is not 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 the rupture point വീക്കൻ ചെയ്യാ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ആക്ച്വലി വരേണ്ടത് ഈ ഗ്രാഫ് വരേണ്ടത് എങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു അതായത് ഈ സിഗ്മാവായിനേക്ക താഴെ ആയിരിക്കണം ഡീഫോംഡ് മെറ്റീരിയലിന്റെ സിഗ്മാവായി അതാണ് വീക്കനിങ് ആക്ച്വലി വരേണ്ടത് എങ്ങനെയായിരുന്നു ബൈ തിയേറ്റിക്കൽ ഇത് പറയുമ്പോൾ പക്ഷെ എക്സ്പെരിമെന്റിൽ വി ഗോട്ട് സിഗ്മാവായി ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ ദാറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദി സിഗ്മാവായി ദി സിഗ്മാവായി മനസ്സിലായോ ഏറ്റവും <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, if sigma y is here, this is a stronger material. If sigma y is here, this is a weaker material. So by theoretical concept, this should be the sigma y value. For a deformed material, the sigma y should be less than the sigma y value. But by experiment, we got this. Sigma y is greater than this value. Okay, what is the reason? This reason is explained by the interaction of dislocations. Interaction of dislocations. dislocation okay <clears throat> and uh contradictory in the reason of the interaction of dislocation yeah yes interaction of dislocation a contradictory endu kondu varunu serikum varanda engena irunu strength increase cheya venda deformation vali ഡിസ്ലോക്കേഷൻ ഡെൻസിറ്റി ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യും ബട്ട് സ്ട്രെങ്ത് ഇൻക്രീസ് ചെയ്യാൻ വേണ്ട ബൈ തിയേറ്റിക്കൽ വൺ പക്ഷെ തിയേറ്റിക്കലി നമുക്ക് കിട്ടിയത് വീക്കൺ ആവുകയാണ് ദീസൺ ഈസ് ദ റീസൺ ഈസ് ഡിസ്ലോക്കേഷൻ ഇൻട്രാക്ഷൻ ഡിസ്ലോക്കേഷൻ ഇൻട്രാക്ഷൻ ഓക്കെ സോ so we already studied the motion of dislocation okay for a given dislocation there are three types of motion gliding and uh, um, the climb cross slip etc are the motions of the dislocation and when the dislocation moving when i deform this material when i deform this material actually the dislocation is moving either by gliding or climbing or cross slip dislocation move yana from one point to the surface move on so during this motion there will be some interaction between the dislocation there will be some interaction between the dislocation okay so that interaction is actually uh, solve this contradiction between the theoretical and experimental concept okay a uh, interaction solve idundo ee idundo unit step deformation ee dislocation move is finally we got a step finally we got this step and actually in this this is a perfect crystal this is a perfect crystal the dislocation disappear here okay so this is a perfect crystal and these are the um imperfect crystal with the dislocation at the dislocation so next i am going to explain the dislocation interaction so for example we can see <coughs> so 
and this dislocation interaction and other in the slide include it okay so this dislocation interaction is basically two types first one is dislocation pile ups and just a second okay so what happened during this cold working process okay actually the during cold working process the strength should have increased okay should have increased we experimentally prove that during the cold working process the strength is increased so how this strength is increased so during uh, cold working increase the strength of the material we already explained that and strength of the material is inversely proportional to the mobility of dislocation inversely proportional to the mobility of the dislocation that means for a particular material for example i am taking a material unit volume material and here we have number of dislocations there are number of dislocations inside this material okay in this material and when i apply an external shear force on this body what happened the dislocation try to move by gliding climbing cross slip etc okay and this dislocation try to move from the interior portion to the surface and when they move when they move if there is any obstruction for the mobility of the dislocation that leads to increasing the strength of the material if we can provide any obstruction for the mobility of dislocation that will increase the strength of the material okay so that is actually happen in a strain hand material in a strain hand material what happen during strain handling the number of dislocation will increase number of dislocation will increase but by strain handling the chance of getting interlock each other also increased chance of getting interlock the interlocking is nothing but the two dislocation when they meet okay they or when they meet an obstruction or when they meet each other they may not try in further propagation arrest you and further propagate you okay or their mobility is arrested so number number of dislocations increase here by strain handling okay but if the number increase is more the and the ad weaken avilla karan enda it has to move from the interior portions to the outer region outer surface but when we increase the dislocation each dislocation the chance of getting interlock is increased the chance of getting interlock is increased because the finding a, a, a dislocation the probability of finding a dislocation will increase with the strain handling because here we have lots of dislocation present in a unit volume material so this interface between the dislocation increase by strain handling thereby the dislocation cannot move further they interlock each other okay so this arresting of dislocation motion leads to the increase of strength of the material during by strain handling okay so strain handling cheyumbo dislocations increase him but dislocation the motion arrest out motion arrest out a motion arrest cheyunnondana idinde strength increase cheyanalla kaaranam so strain hardly increase the strength and other than that of dislocation the interaction between the dislocation other reasons are foreign atoms we already discussed about climb up climb up or climb down process we or cross slip process we have seen some obstruction that may be a foreign atom or we may be a vacancy so this foreign atom actually we um, um, uh, introduce into the material that is called alloying alloying process so when the alloy uh, come into alloy material or impurity come into material in this base metal what happen this impurity or alloy element act as an obstacle for the movement of this dislocation okay 
So we have to apply more amount of force to move this dislocation. That is why the sigma y increases here. You have to apply more amount of stress to, um, uh, to overcome this obstruction or obstacle. So the pouring atom is the reason for as, um, uh, strain hardening is the strengthening method. The motion of the dislocation can be arrested by strain hardening. Second one is this pouring atoms that also block the motion of the dislocations. And third one is second phase precipitate. We will discuss this second phase precipitate later. And that also uh, strengthen the material by arresting the motion of the dislocations. Okay. And this dislocation motion arresting. For example, he, here we have um, number of dislocation. Actually, uh, for example, uh, consider this two plane. I'm not explaining in detail. So consider this two plane, and when two dislocation with the um, same side, sorry, opposite side, when it come together, when it come together, here we have number of dislocation. So there is a probability for two dislocation with the opposite side come up into a point or um. Hello? Hello? Okay. Ah, okay, okay, fine. Uh, electricity problem. I'm not save yet. Just a second. After one, you can find it. I'm Okay, fine. So, this is the So, two dislocations coming to this point. Okay. So, when ha what happened? When, when um, two dislocations with the opposite sign come to this point, they will annihilate or they disappear. Okay. And when they are in opposite sign, opposite sign, they will ripple each other. So the rippling of, if they are in opposite sign, they will ripple each other. These two dislocation. So the rippling actually the arrest of motion. Motion arrest stream. And I'm ripple don't really. So, the final thing is that if the number of dislocation increases, this rippling or the disappearing of dislocation chance also increases. Or there may be a pile up between the dislocation. Okay. Uh, dislocation pile up nor some dislocation with the, which create a traffic jam for the other dislocations lead to the dislocation pile up. Okay, some dislocation with the maybe and by combining these two dislocations, a final dislocation will be formed, a resulting dislocation will be formed with the higher energy. This is a dislocation with the higher energy. And this dislocation will not allow other dislocations to cross this direction. A traffic jam will be developed in this point. So that is also arrest the movement of these dislocations. So by this different um, interaction between the dislocation, the motion of this dislocation is arrested. Or the motion is um, the amount of motion or the um, for an unstrained material, the, the number of dislocation is very um, few number. So it can easily de move within the crystal without any interface like this. The chance of getting any interaction between the two dislocation is low in case of this uh, undeformed material. But for deformed or strain hand material, the number of dislocation is very high. So the chance of getting arresting a motion is also high. That is why, that is the reason for strengthening of the material by strain hardening. Okay. So that is the reason. Any doubt? So dislocation pile up also is the reason for uh, this, uh, um, this pile up and uh, this uh, 
Cecil dislocation. Uh, another time is Cecil dislocation. The comb combining of dislocation, either by addition and or they repel each other. When they are interfacing down, they are getting interlocked and they arrest the motion of the dislocation. And thereby we can increase the, that is the reason for the increase in strength of the deformed material. In the future, you will study strain handling or forging or uh, rolling process is, uh, is a good process for in increase the strength of the material. Okay. We can increase the strength of uh, material by forging or rolling process. Actually, by rolling and forging process, we deform the material in by introducing strain. By introducing strain on that material. So, thereby strain hardening is of course or work hardening. Another name is called work hardening and thereby we can increase the strength of the material. Any doubt? Uh, sir, yeah, uh, yeah, the location uh, yeah, the uh, gliding, climbing, Crossing. Climb up, climb down, yeah. Yeah. Yes. He actually so, climb up and down cross lip. And the moon motions actually obstructions very much. So uh, for climbing or cross lip, we have to apply more amount of force. Gliding is actually a smooth process. Smooth dislocation movement. Okay. We have extra force. So gliding material, uh, the material strength is very low. But when we introduce any obstruction for the um, movement of the dislocation, then that leads to increase the strength. Okay. And obstruction under the lava, either by introducing any uh, external impurity into the material or by increasing the dislocation number, number of dislocation. Okay, strain handling way number number increase dislocation and number increase. But dislocation number increase by the same way. Dislocation or dislocation and modem modem or you barrier form G for the motion of dislocation. Okay, or interface will be or interlocking the dislocation themselves get interlocked between each other. Okay, so that act as a barrier for the motion of dislocation, thereby strength will be improved. Ah, obstacle no or dislocation then or, or, or dislocation obstacle material dislocation now okay so increase the number of dislocation thereby the obstacle of obstacle dislocation number also will increase thereby we can restrict the mo movement that is the first um, case to increase the strength so other thing is seen as by strain hardening second one by impurity adding the impurity also act as a obstruction and that also resists the movement of a smooth movement like a gliding that is a smooth movement other rest team they have to spend more energy or we need to supply more amount of force to cross that obstruction by climbing or cross with for strength increase force the strength of the material is high 